The fitness industry just covered up a murder. This isn't clickbait and I am being 100% serious. I'm not even twisting the story a little bit when I tell you guys what I'm about to. And it's quite different from some bodybuilder just had a random heart attack. This one is big and certainly a lot darker. And you might be wondering, who am I talking about? Well, the victim I'm referring to in this video is none other than Leo and Longevity. So I'm going to try to blow this case wide open, sit down with your 3cc syringes, do your shots, lubricate the areas in which you need to lubricate for whatever reason you need to lubricate them, and relax. I'm going to do this with the help of an autopsy, an OnlyFans, and some really, really weird golfing videos. Yes, it is true that Leo Longevity has passed away. He only dates ugly women. I look for the ugliest woman, he goes, wow, she's hot. Like, no, she's not, bro. You know, hear uh, screaming yeah. and noises and stuff. The last pictures that was on his phone saying that uh, he tried to strangle her or hurt her in some way and she was crying. I remember too, Leo, he didn't like those girls. Remember you were saying he, he didn't like the girls you had in your hair. Yeah, he, he didn't like them because he thought they were ugly. <laughs> You have definitely seen Leo around. He has been on lots of infamous podcasts and talks a lot about biohacking using modern medicines and true pharmaceutical medications. His passion was no doubt trying to maximize being as longevity oriented as you can and then slowly it drifted into more of performance enhancing but not in the sense of muscular performance enhancing more in the sense of actually just accruing a great cognitive ability. And because of all the connections he had there was quite a few words said after his death. We had Greg Doucette come out, Vigorous Steve, Derek More Plates More Dates, and even myself I made a video a while back. A lot of people simply reduced this event down to a mystery. Nothing more, nothing less. That it was quote unquote their best friend who had some sort of manic episode in a bathroom and died but was also too happy with life and consistently a good person. And one person commented that the devastated friend said his emotions state was very good. Actually, he was the happiest I've ever seen him before he passed away, which is one of the things that led me to believe that this was some kind of manic episode that went too far toward the happy energetic side of the spectrum. It's not just me, but that sounds ridiculous for somebody who's concerned about his death and also the whole happy mania causing his death. Kind of weird. Now, before we get into this whole murder mystery thing, I think it's extremely important to provide some context to the situation, just so that you're a little bit more familiar with Leo's background and everything I'm about to say is alleged and not necessarily fact, okay? Now, I'm not going to be blunt or soft in the punches here, but Leo, while he did provide a lot of information to a lot of people online, he was quite a fucking terrible person. I mean, insane would be a general understatement. And just to be clear, I'm not making this video as some sort of rest in peace statement. Obviously, there's a lot to say about a suspected murder here, and you'll see why this is an extremely important topic to discuss a little bit later on. Anyways, this guy Leo posted a ton of content, gained a lot of virality pretty quickly, and his content was generally awesome. It was really well structured, talked a lot about the ins and outs of mechanism behind drugs and certain dietary strategies, a lot of cool stuff. And even now, I think his videos are pretty well thought out and still useful to this day. And credit where credit is due, he was extremely smart and intelligent. He had the ability to speak very fluidly without needing many cuts, unlike myself, and did an amazing job at presenting information in a digestible way. But behind the scenes, he was also doing some pretty terrible shit as well. See, a quite a few years ago, he had been accused of being an abuser to pretty much his entire household. His ex-wife, their daughter, and even his pets too. And I say accused, but there is pretty hard documentation on all of this stuff. This is a document from a domestic violence prevention order his ex-wife addressed the court with. And as we can see here, it was proposed he ended up with zero custody of his daughter, which ended up actually becoming the true outcome of what happened. Now, Leo did make a comment regarding 
regarding all the allegations before they were brought to court, claiming that Lucy, his wife, and him did not suffer any issues of domestic violence. And then went further on to add that one of the reasons they're struggling in their marriage is due to COVID's social distancing. What a load of bullshit. <laughs> if anything, I think that would improve a relationship substantially. We can see here in this restraining order that his ex-wife tried to clarify that some form of violence was happening on a daily basis. He's threatened to murder his ex-wife here, and he'd also confirmed heavily abuse of both alcohol and other drugs, presumably outside of the biohacking context. Reading through these text messages is a lot like looking through the stems of narcissism. He repeatedly made the claim that he was the boss since 14 years old as some sort of claim to authority. And in these messages here, which I believe were between him and Tony Huge, he proclaims he's never been second in command to any man in any situation ever. He's a born leader. He also, to despite the fact that he had a daughter, reading here, he was infuriated since she would never be able to carry his last name, which again, sounds like something of a narcissistic origin story. I mean, it's, it's just a name and it's not the end of the world. Of course, it's a pretty serious issue as a father, but there's definitely other ways to approach it as opposed to just abusing the shit out of your family. But one of the most important takeaways from the documentation here is this huge chunk of text, which is actually quite comical. Basically, Lucy had explained that Leo became furious over the belief that she had hid the milk. And I'm not even bullshitting. This is a true story. This is actually what happened. In the back of the refrigerator, rather than the front of the refrigerator. And then he absolutely blew up on her over text messages about this. Literally, word for word saying, you're a fucking idiot. You think I can't see it? I told you 50 fucking times. It's not a goddamn joke. You were supposed to organize the fridge. What the fuck is wrong with you? And he continues. Now, whatever you do, I'm dead serious. You've got to remember this scenario. Because as strange as it sounds, it all ties into the murder suspicions later on that we're going to talk about. A and this isn't fake, you guys. This is real core documentation with true text provided. At this point, it's very clear to say that this guy's a pretty big lunatic. As one commenter said here, and the same thing can be said about how I took this when it initially released, nobody would have expected Leo to be like this behind closed doors, especially because he was typically pretty well composed on camera. The latter point being exactly how he was going to reestablish himself even after such allegations had came out. But that's not something he was able to do and accomplish on his own. You see, Leo resided in America, but after the domestic violence allegations unfolded, he had lost custody of his child. So he decided, conveniently, to move right next to me in Pattaya, Thailand to build his entire life and career with the support of Tony Huge. And like I said a moment ago, there were a lot of people, or should I say enough people, that cared about the information Leo put out, unfazed with what was going on off camera, which allowed him to maintain or even rebuild his platform. And to that, all I have to say is that whatever happened in his private life doesn't void any of his knowledge. I think what he had to say was still extremely valuable and my position on that still stands. Do I think he was the genuine person that he portrayed on camera and on YouTube? No, I, I don't. But it doesn't discredit who he was and the information that he provided. And to be honest, most celebrities and influencers have a massive dark past. I mean, just look at the situation with Mr. Beast right now and all that's being uncovered about hiring pedophiles, sex offenders, and even the R words, right? Like he, he has these people on his team right now, allegedly. And we have Dr. Disrespect. We have, I mean, there's way too many people with their pasts being sort of undug from society's deep interwoven webs of the internet and being shown publicly now is a problematic issue, but still they retain a great deal of following. I truly highly doubt even with Mr. Beast's terrible situation right now, like disgusting fucking situation right now, he's ever going to be deplatformed. He's YouTube's golden child. In this situation, generally, as long as you ignore the <laughs> conflicts that are going on behind the scenes, you can keep on posting content and no one's really going to realize it. Ultimately, the thing is, is that there's too many damn people in this world. New people are always going to be watching and circulating your content and not enough people are going to see the content exposing you for whatever might be going wrong. Obviously, we're comparing giants to ants over here, but the same logic sort of applies. Now, now, obviously, during the period, all of Leo's domestic issues were being brought to light. Some people were left extremely triggered, justifiably so, saying things like, this guy doesn't deserve the platform he should rot in hell. But we also had guys like Johnny Bravo at the same time suggesting Leo will look back at this and hopefully change for the better. The situation with Leo now, right? He's looking at this. It's all online. He sees all the comments. He sees everything, right? You don't think he realizes that he needs to make changes in his fucking life? 
So if anything good comes out of this situation, right, he's going to see how he was acting, right? And it's going to make him a fucking better person. And if it doesn't, then he fucking failed in life. So from the outside, I'm seeing this situation. I'm realizing, you know what? I do bad shit. Everyone does bad shit, right? But the people who win in life in general are the ones who learn from their fucking mistakes and learn from doing shit that they weren't supposed to do or acting a certain way. Unfortunately, though, that's not exactly how it had played out, or at least not with the time that he had left. So as we were talking about, Leo was really not on his back after these allegations, but Tony Huge played a huge part in getting him back on his feet. Russo went on to explain that Tony basically entirely funded Leo's re-entry into the YouTube scene. He gave him a bed, a place to stay, and so forth. And it makes sense what he said, which was that Tony having the blood on his hands didn't really make sense, but that doesn't necessarily leave him clean hands either, which we'll get to shortly. As a side note, I know that there's a fuck ton of foreshadowing, and I promise it's all going to be be worth it just sit tight okay i promise this shit's gonna get wild on top of all of the rehousing and food and all the other good stuff that tony was providing leo he also had introduced him to many different women as well and in pattaya thailand that's not too hard to come by and i'm not going to dive too far into this but tony was obsessed with developing a harem of women having multiple essentially wives to support him and he to support them or so he claims essentially what he really does is just pays prostitutes to stick around if you want to know how i know i'm not going to tell you but that's what he does. It's not really the same thing as a harem. It's more just a prostitution house. But you know what? Either way, he seemed to like to share some of these women with Leo himself. And it was nothing more than just a gift or maybe a gesture. And despite having an interesting way of life himself, Tony clearly hasn't had an issue avoiding violence with these women. And I guess he felt Leo would at least respect that and learned from his mistakes and definitely wouldn't commit the same terrible acts against total strangers. Clearly, Tony was wrong. But I remember too, Leo, he didn't like those girls. Remember you were saying he, he didn't like the girls you had in your hair. Yeah, he, he didn't like them because he thought they were ugly. He thought that they disrespected me. He thought that they weren't loyal, like they would turn on me in a in an instant. And that was, you know, loyalty is the most important thing. It was the most important thing to Leo. So yeah, he just, for all these reasons, thought that this harem was just a liability. But what makes matters worse is that Tony, knowing Leo's past and his aggravation towards women, decided to completely ignore what was going on. This comment addresses a point perfectly. They also pointed out the fact that Tony afterwards had recorded a video of her showing that she had nothing wrong with her. She was just fine, essentially, to protect himself. Unfortunately, in Thailand, unless someone presses charges in a scenario like this, policemen seem to give zero shits about intervening, and even so, if Tony was morally in the wrong, he didn't give two shits if he was gonna get booted to another country for it. Especially now that Tony has that recording, he could shout out it was all false allegations anyway, so the girl probably wouldn't have gotten much out of the police anyways, and to be honest, living in Thailand, I can tell you that the police take money or favors all of the time. The thing is, I don't think the consequences of that night ended here. In fact, I think that Leo's death has a lot to do with what had happened on that night. Reason being is that while Tony had a lot of words on Leo's death and continued to put him in high regard, referring to Leo as his best friend and all, I don't think that was entirely true. Unfortunately, it seems that the video I was looking for has been taken down, but luckily I found a comment referencing it here. To sum it up, basically Leo used to talk down towards Tony all the time, arguing that Leo Leo's viewers were more sophisticated than Tony's, and has been shown repeatedly blowing up on Tony's women as well. Tony and I differ in many things. Like We have different tastes in women, I want this to be clear. Although she's very polite and nice, I'm not even talking about her age, I'm talking about just looks. So we have a different, please don't judge me for his choices in women, I would never... I, let me, not that, not let that me the, close the door, keep going. Keep not going. that I... Not that, <laughs> Not that I choose women based on looks. He only dates ugly women. And the reason I think is because he's even voiced this to me a couple of times. He says they treat me better. We go to clubs, bro. If you go to a go-go bar with him, you'll have the time of your life watching who he picks. I look for the ugliest woman. He goes, wow, she's hot. Like, no, she's not, bro. And you're lying to yourself. You know she's not hot, but you think she's going to treat you well because you have low self-esteem and don't think you deserve to be treated well by a hot girl. 
So with that, I present you two key figures that played a massive role in Leo's death. Tony Huge and his new best friend, Connor Murphy, who also came to Thailand. The two can be seen together in Johnny Bravo's interview here, just a few months after Leo's death. I was just gonna ask you, is he there in the Philippines with you now? Yeah, he's right here. Oh, actually, yeah, get him on camera. Yeah, you can come over. Hello. Connor, how are you, buddy? Bravo, Bravo viewers, how are you guys? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Connor, for coming on. How do you like the Philippines? You know, John, I'm not in the best mood. I had probably the worst massage I've ever had in my life today. Well, no happy ending? You know? Well, they avoided my dick like the bubonic plague. That's not a good Mine one. Too. I mean which might not seem sketchy to start with, but just watch the pieces fall together. Based on the events that happened between Leo and Tony's women, I 1000% believe this was a premeditated murder. Tony planned the entire thing and Connor executed it. So let's first start with Tony. Because of the moment of Leo's death, he didn't give a shit to mourn him. When he found Leo dead, it wasn't my best friend, it was just the body. Yes, it is true that Leo Longevity has passed away. We think that he passed away around Friday at 11.30 a.m. or thereabouts. I didn't find the body until Monday. I didn't check on him because I thought he either took a sleeping pill and was just sleeping for 24 hours and then I just got more suspicious as time went on. And then I thought he went on a vacation because he's done this before, like go on a weekend vacation. Let's keep that in mind, that Tony's background in law and everything that he's supposed to do and be extremely careful with and not put himself at any risk is being employed with everything that he says. But how well has that really played out with almost everything every single commenter on videos calling him guilty. In his official response, Tony claimed it would have been impossible for someone else to have caused this. He suggests quite confidently that Leo didn't die from anything sudden or acute and that it was simply something Leo did to himself. We've already got on record from news outlets that he was found dead lying face down wearing a black t-shirt only with blood trickling from his mouth and nose and a bruise on his left eye, with his place being totally trashed. But thankfully, we can go into much deeper detail because we actually have an autopsy and i'm just going to put some screenshots up on the screen and summarize everything we're looking at so like we suspected this wasn't drug inflicted no detection of amphetamines or opioids or ketamine no gases no poisons nothing else he does have trace amounts of alcohol which is nowhere near enough to feel even tipsy there was some detected thc which surely isn't super healthy but isn't going to make you enter a manic episode or kill you definitely nothing that is going to cause a absolute suicidal mania episode what is interesting to see is that his skull was fractured and he had a ruptured blood vessel in his brain which mind you isn't something easy to accomplish and certainly wouldn't happen from a single slip and fall. Otherwise, I guarantee you we'd all be fucking dead. I think she's quite close. And this isn't just a speculation. We've confirmed, allegedly, that there was someone else's fingerprints in the scene as well. Now, sure, maybe I can agree it could have been someone else's prints given the crime wasn't really maintained to any standards and there wasn't really any true sort of FBI kind of shit you see on TV going on here. It's Thailand. But we already have confirmation that he wasn't alone that night and so it's almost certain that the prints were of someone who was involved. So the police actually got fingerprints from the place and DNA sample. Um, they got fingerprints on the bathroom and they got some other DNA. I've got the confirmation that they have found another DNA that was not like this. But as same for the fingerprints, no results, nothing came out of this. Meaning they have not produced any report, they have not processed the evidence. We are eight months from the time that they found his body and those evidence have not been processed and analyzed. So looking at the autopsy as seen here, the official's cause of death is brain trauma with skull fracture due to blunt object impact. Again, you'd have to be a fucking newborn to fracture your skull just from falling over that and the fact that he also listed the bruises on his body too. So now we've got confirmation that Tony lied about how Leo died and he also has been extremely inconsistent about his stories of what he was doing around the period of Leo's death. In this article, Tony claimed he hadn't heard from him for days before getting concerned and checking on him, which I'm assuming means he he was with Connor at the same time as stated here, but then in the other instances, he claims that he was there and even asked one of his girls to get the room door key to go check on Leo. It wasn't until I knocked on his door and then checked around back at the glass slider and I saw the room looked kind of torn up. So then I, uh, I, I opened the slider door. His bedroom door was locked, but the slider door was open on the side and walked in and then opened his bathroom door and 
the bathroom door wouldn't open because his body was blocking the door. So what actually happened that night? What was going on? Obviously, Tony is slipping up in his story somewhere. In the original news story, he claims that he was out of town, got worried due to no responses, and went to go check on Leo himself. But as this comment outlines, Tony was already there when the investigators were there, arrived, and the police were truly taking a look at the scene. He was in the photos of the first responders on social media. Lucy, Leo's wife, actually confirmed the fact that he had asked a female to call the media there so that they could be there before the police arrived. And then, suggesting that Tony had paid the news outlets to lie about the scene and what had happened arguing that either Tony had a direct line with the police or the news reporters at large just by paying them, which totally lines up with the fact that one of his women works at a bar and conveniently owned by the same guy who owns Pattaya News, the first company to report on the event. The last pictures that was on his phone. You probably heard the story of the vulgar mentioned by Tony that Leo saw on the 27th at night. Um, I'm in my room with my girl and he's in his room with his girl and I can, you know, hear uh, screaming yeah. and noises and stuff it's a little scary because i like this is a, a little bit more than normal i mean there's definitely screams that come from his room but this is like next level screaming this is like i don't think this is okay screaming yeah so well, i was pretty nervous about it but like ha huh, like i don't want to disturb leo's privacy during certain times like certainly when he's with a girl i don't want to like interrupt and I, and I don't know what's going on and but later she comes out to my room to talk to my girl and when she's done in his room and she's crying and she's holding her neck like she can't breathe and uh yeah just a kind of a mess and i knew what happened uh but i had my girl talk to her and then explain to me what happened and i said okay we need to calm this down right now before someone calls the police so i said please make sure your friend's comfortable i'll pay whatever it takes just make her calm yeah after about five minutes of my girl calming her down she was fine then she was like happy and laughing and funny so i made some videos of her being happy so if she went to the police later i could show like okay when she left the house it was okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it can't be that bad interestingly the same girl that was seen by leo and keep in mind that she was the friend of the girl tony was seeing she worked for one of those thai bar and the individual owning that bar is the same individual that owns Bataya news which was the first article that i found regarding leo's passing coming back to that article you can see from the photos from the scenes, they were all over the place. And you can also see that you can also see Tony in the same scene. It's still not normal that he was allowed on the scene with them. But that's not the only thing. After reviewing the pictures published from the news articles, I can see from Leo's pictures on his phone to the pictures there that some things are missing. And I do believe his room was tempered prior to the police arrival. We've even got screenshots from Tony's own Instagram story stating he was there as he was dying and heard noises again, is adamant from day zero, it's just not possible that there was any other individuals involved. And the police have done a lot of forensics work and a lot of photos and a lot of interviews and hopefully they'll find more information, but it's a really confusing situation. Just without giving a lot of the graphic details, it's just not really possible anyone else was involved. So that's the story he's going with. He was there. He was already there before the reporters, before the police, before the news. Otherwise, it was just inherently a lie. We also know that Connor arrived to Thailand about the time of Leo's death. We also know that the two were together at the time Leo had died. <laughs> And it seems like Tony was trying to do everything he could to keep Connor away from being connected to Leo's death. But I think it's actually true, allegedly, maybe, that both of them were in the house when Leo had died. Tony had enough of the physical abuse his women were withstanding from Leo. And I don't doubt at this point he was well aware that Leo wasn't going to change for the better. And now we all know Connor is beyond psycho, so he was the one to get his hands dirty. As one comment suggests here, things are always handled in past bathrooms because there won't be any witnesses and you're also able to corner them and deal brutal damage in a matter of moments. But there's also another crucial reason that this happened in the bathroom. I found a series of texts between Tony and Leo where Leo was asking about a plumber because there was a problem with the bathroom. 
um, I found a series of text messages between Tony and, and Leo. And Leo mentioned to Tony that there is a mold issue or some kind of issue with the bathroom and asked Tony to send a plumber to fix it. I knew Leo very well. He would have never touched a tool from a mile away unless it was something big and he was very scared of mold. That could have been maybe he tried to do something with the toilet, but he would have not done anything further than that. To piece things together, we really need to consider that Tony, a lawyer, obviously used these texts, gave them to Connor and said, look, there's something with the bathroom. This also is why Tony claims that he heard some noises coming from the bathroom. Also why they must have destroyed it during the process as well, including the toilet. It also makes zero sense that there was blood found in the bedroom. And if there was all of this damage inflicted in the bathroom, how was there blood in the bedroom? If by some wild chance this was self-inflicted, did Leo just suddenly try to kill himself outside of the bathroom and ended up in the bathroom and then had a manic attack in the bathroom? Or somebody who murdered Leo tried to clean it up, dragged his body into the bathroom after knocking him unconscious and continued to do the job. Now, I also think the witness part of this is very interesting too, because it means the only people who know what happened to Leo were the people who were there when this had obviously happened in the first place. And that makes for me, Connor, a prime suspect. If we go look at Connor's Instagram, he has a highlight where he posts about a YouTube channel and claiming that it's not him and someone had hacked him and that's how those posts got made. I would argue that this content is actually his, but whether or not it is actually Connor's content, I think it's really important and we should take a look. <laughs> Notice how he says, maybe Leo will forgive you when you join him in hell, suspiciously in a bathroom. Okay, so very odd instance into which Connor is basically admitting to some form of crime or murder, or at least insinuating that somebody he was aware of committed some form of murder. Is there more instances where he's doing the same thing? Well, we've got another screenshot of Connor threatening to murder somebody in Tony's bathroom again, and that's uh, strike number two. We've also got a literal confession from Connor in his mocking of Leo's abused wife. That's three. Why is the milk in the back of the fridge? It's supposed to be in the front. You think I can't see it? I told you 50 times. It's not a goddamn joke. In the same comment thread, we have multiple people saying literally Connor is admitting that he murdered or someone or knows someone involved with murdering Leo. And then Connor responded to the guy who's confused and basically confirms that the only fan videos that got leaked supported everything the guy said in the comments. So that's number four. We've got Connor recreating a murder scene, which he again only would know about himself with the girl that Leo had abused too. And to top it all off, Connor makes sure to create skits of him going to jail all over the place as well. Now, I think a lot of people might question why this girl has such devotion for Connor, even though he, in a previous video and a news article, beat her with a golf club and her little sister and got blood all over their house. Either they're really scared of what he can do or somewhat grateful for what he's done, maybe a little bit of both. But they definitely wouldn't be so fearful to press charges on him if they didn't think there'd be a risk of more violence because of it. So when Connor said that was all for content, meaning like he made this shit as a, a mockery, but that's how we know that this was totally also bullshit. And at some point in the case where Connor was literally playing Blue's Clues with Leo's death over fucking OnlyFans, it seems like he thinks he's beyond ever getting caught or just entering a really deep case of psychosis. Every piece of content he produces down to the fucking golfing videos is all a mockery of Leo's murder. And you would be surprised that golf actually has a lot more to do with Leo's murder than you would think. And we've got a YouTube channel where Connor created a video scene where essentially this assassin attacks him with a golf club. It makes you think that there might have been a golf club involved when he killed Leo or somebody killed Leo. And it would make even more sense because in the autopsy that we just reported on, he had died via blunt force, trauma, and a fractured skull. Well, the club in this skit could very very well be the one that was used to kill Leo. If we come, if we come here and take a look at these crime scene photos, 
I'm showing you here that this is the five iron. Um, this is another five iron. This is that mid range. There's the mid range. There's the mid range here. Oh, oh, and just just so you guys know, for this angle here, Connor Murphy was actually standing on the sink, and then these missed strikes right here were basically Connor Murphy standing on the sink and coming down with that much force. But there's one thing that could have been a big giveaway that I didn't even realize. When I was making my most recent video on Connor, we included some CCTV footage and that footage was actually edited. I didn't plan for it to be in the video. I didn't even have it. It was my editor, which threw it in for me, which kudos to you, man. You're awesome. So it took me a minute to figure it out, but that footage has to have come from John Bravo's YouTube channel because it is literally nowhere else on the internet whatsoever. So if we go back and listen to the audio, we can hear some chops and cuts. But then Bravo says something that really confuses me. It's raw, unedited footage, except I had to censor some of it. Now, the footage that I have is unedited. It's the raw footage that the cameramen filmed in Thailand. And I have to censor some of it. And I can't show it to you all on here because I can't put that on YouTube. But. My point is what he censored could have either pointed towards Leo's death or something else that I'm going to touch on on the end of the video. But back to what's happening, obviously he's contradicting himself quite a bit. I would think it'd be really weird to clarify that it was unedited, but also that you edited it in the same sentence. Kind of weird. I think he's actually maybe lying about his source and he had this footage before the Pattaya News even had footage like this. Despite him genuinely covering this as a journalist, I think he's covering the story to cover up Tony as much as he can. I mean, we have evidence that he took down a ton of videos on the topic specifically because allegedly Tony tried to take down his channel due to those videos being up about Leo. And that claim lines up pretty accurately when you notice Bravo's pinned comment has been deleted and now explicitly rules out Tony's involvement entirely, which from a logical standpoint makes no sense to rule out someone who was there at the time of the murder. And let's not forget forget him and Tony are friends too. So either his judgment is clouded by this friendship or he is on this whole thing too, which he's not a stupid guy. So clearly, you know, which one it probably is. And a lot of people have been commenting this in his comment section as well on his channel talking about despite the really contradicting and strange things that Tony had said on a long one hour interview, he simply ignored any of it, didn't call it out, just simply let it wash by. And as a journalist who has researched this detailed information, you could very clearly say that what Tony was saying didn't align well with what's actually been reported to happen. So now we have the most publicized reporter on the situation distorting the narrative. And then you have Connor and Tony who are basically walking away worry-free and the story continues to progress further. Connor is simply planning to frame his girl for the entire thing, which is exactly why he busted up their house a couple of months ago. In fact, I was across the street in Pattaya when this had happened only to claim that she was the one that inflicted the damage on him, which is why he claims that he ended up with this brutal scar. And I think, like this Redditor comment here, that these two need to be taken to the FBI. And so it's good to see that despite everything Leo did, Lucy is still trying to keep his channel alive, as well as investigating this further with actual private investigators. And we do have confirmation from her that the FBI is actively looking into the case. So really all we can do now is wait for another update unfortunately. Hopefully they can bring this case to a close and we can find out what actually happened to Leo. And I said it on my last video of him, but I hope to live to see the day where Connor puts himself behind bars. And after writing this video and looking at all of the details that we have on paper, I'm very sure when I say this, Connor is not well, Tony is not well, and this stuff is all alleged. So take my word for it. I'm just allegedly saying things. None of this is factual, but it's out there.